This is a show uh, hosted by two former Googlers. You got Joe Kurnaski, he's VP of Eng. I'm Jordan Thibodeau, do mergers and acquisitions. If you like business, AI, plus a dash of comedy, this is your show. Hit like and subscribe. Today, we are joined by Anthony Rapetto. He is a self taught mathematician who leapfrogged at UC Berkeley's upper division in high school, skipped college to design practical solutions from fish farms to Panasonic tablet touchscreens, and now focuses on neural network architectures and real world design. So, Anthony, welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you. Hey, nice <laughs> to have you. Uh, nice to have you here. Um, I came across Anthony's work when I was on Medium, um, and I was like trying to figure out what the hell are these mixture of experts things. And then I searched and I found Anthony's blog. And back in 2017, Anthony said, a, mix, a mixture of ex experts MOE is a special type of neural network. Neurons are connected in many small clusters, and each cluster is only active under special circumstances. Um, he says, as neural networks become... Uh, complex, integrating many streams of data and supplying a great variety of responses, mixture of expert models will dominate. So it helps to understand how a mixture of experts could evolve. So back in 2017, you were already saying, like, this is going to be the way forward. So what gave you that insight? Yeah. Good call. Um, it was particularly, uh, it was right after the attention paper, attention is all you need, the mm -hmm. transformer, original Google transformer paper. They were using vector similarity for attention Mm -hmm. And Jeff Hinton's original mixture of expert model is by vector, vector similarity. You, the capsule network was published just a couple months after the attention is all you need. For noobs, so I was specifically vector, saying for noobs, these vector, two models. Sorry, for noobs, vector similarity. Can you explain real quick and then go back? Oh, to uh, you just, um, you're trying to locate everything in this high dimensional space. And the closer the vectors are together, mm -hmm. then you just assume that they must be similar. So like king and queen are different from each other in the same way that man and woman are different. They have vector spaces that are preserved. So, uh, yeah, that vector process in attention, I was like, that's perfect match for Hinton's capsule network. And I looked at the different benefits that you get from it. Back in 2017, we were looking at long short-term memory, um, like mm -hmm. LSTMs and end-to-end -end ResNets was the norm. Like every conference I went to is like, obviously just do a ResNet. Uh -huh. So to say mixture of experts with attention, amongst all the other options. That was, that was what I argued for. And the thing that I argued after it was that you could also improve upon that by detecting the error detector neurons and growing a new expert at that location. And so I still haven't seen people do that. I, I don't have the data and the, the servers for that. Explain error detection hmm. neurons and then uh, maybe why oh, yeah. people aren't doing it. And, and Joe, if you have any follow-ups after Anthony responds, go for it. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I got, a, I sketched a drawing. So you Fantastic. can see on the page here. Hell yes. Um, that as you get neuron activity increasing, mm -hmm. you're gonna you're gonna get a covariance if it's all clustered. The the neuron activity is clustered with the loss of the network. So the the more loss you get, the more act active that neuron was. That's an error detector neuron, and there's bound mm -hmm. to be some mixed in your network. So you just look for them, and those neurons are just naturally going to tell you when the whole network is going to be wrong. And you grow a new expert at that neuron. And that expert you train while everything else is frozen, you've just trained an error detector and expert. So I haven't seen anyone do that yet, but I'd love to see Google or OpenAI, whoever wants to jump in on it first. But Anthony, why not try out this idea yourself? I mean, I know you can't necessarily host a huge network, but it seems like you could build a small experiment and just verify the idea before trying to ramp it up. Um, I could, I'm a horrible coder. Um, and I, <laughs> I tried at first I tried Mathematica. I was like, I can't really do much with this. Then I tried C plus plus. I was like, I can't do garbage collection. I got Python up to list comprehensions and I'm still buggy as heck. So I yep. don't want to be the coder. I'm better as the idea rat. When I, I worked see. with coders, that's how I started my company was teaming up with people. So yep. Yep. I would love to basically. Okay. So if someone reaches out and wants to help out, I'll tell them to reach out either on, on info at svinvestorsclub.com and I'll connect them, connect them with you. And if they can just email and explain like a background, like what they do, so I know like they're not a kook, me just working solving. This is the best way to peek inside the black box of neural networks. We got this answer because this expert fired when it saw this information. So back, back in 2017, you saw that eventually we're going to be able to look to see how these, uh, at, at, it, or at inference, how these models are actually thinking and where they're getting your information from. 
And then you were hearing stories probably from the Doomers earlier last year about like, it's a black box. We don't know what's going on in here. And you're like, we, we know how to find it already. And then analogical reasoners, analogical reasoners came out and basically was, it did what you said and it kind of proved that. So like good, like plus one sweep a leg on that one. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Yeah. So, so Joe, any thoughts on just like, mixture of experts like did you, did you expect like it to kind of like get this get this big and have this, such wide success like well i i originally came at the mixture of experts because i thought of it as a way to reduce inference cost like i thought oh you know the open ai guys are going to split their model up into into multiple experts and then they only have to evaluate some fraction of the experts on any given token blah 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 reduces the cost of running the model Okay. And then I saw a paper, I forget the title, but they were basically trying to uh, schedule the routing to the experts such that any given expert only took a fraction of the tokens in the total job, but the token load was sort of balanced across the experts, Mm -hmm. which is an interesting sort of sub problem that you get once you have this idea of routing. And I was like, okay, they're really tweaking this. They're trying to get the max performance out of this thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then when I saw... Uh, Anthony's blog posts, I started reading through them and I thought, okay, he's, he's taking this covariance idea and using it as a way to identify when the network is having trouble. You know, it's, it's having more errors than usual and he's pinpointing the error. And then he's going a further step and saying, this is a, a place where the network should organically grow, which is not something that most of the models do, right? They're, they're a fixed architecture. You train them once and then you put them into production for inference. Yeah. So there's a, there's multiple ideas in here. I mean, if Anthony wanted to, you could you could get several papers out of this, no problem. Uh, <laughs> and then he followed on with the idea that the learning, the the specific additional learning you would do in response to that error, would be an expert, which I hadn't thought of. I was I was looking for uh, just my own uh, desire. I was looking for a way for a network to grow organically when it was reaching some load. But I'd never thought that the growth would be a new expert in a sparse mixture of experts model. So mm-hmm. I feel like uh, if I understand it correctly and I've described it correctly, I haven't screwed it up. Uh, Anthony put together multiple ideas there across the course of a couple blog posts. And I'm, I'm assuming we're going to put the, the blog URL in our show notes and so on. Cool. Thank of you. Course. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, of course. I really encourage people to go there and yeah. check it out. And uh, the... Um... Oh, I, I was just going to add something. What you were mentioning earlier about uh, routing between subsets of that's the top K transformer type. I actually yep. wrote, I, I wrote some notes about it on the notes. Good. Top cool. K is on the, this side and then hidden size of venter v- v- word garbage vector similarity. Yep. Um, so vector similarity was the one I mentioned. And the one you're mentioning is switch transformers where you're, you're allocating amongst a team of experts. And that's ah. really good for, um, stable performance. If you want to roll out to the public and have a like brand associated to your expert, you definitely want the switch transformer top, top K transformer type. Cause it's very stable. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. yeah I'd, thanks for, for naming it. I'd forgotten the name of that damn thing. Oh, uh, <laughs> so those are, I think all the key ideas that, that I, I wanted to hit on the, on the network side, on the neural network side, mm-hmm. but I feel like your blog has just a whole bunch of other massive topics. Do you want to move on to some of those? I don't know if Jordan oh. has a, an agenda and ordering, yeah. you know, or if you I, want to drive let's, it. Let's we can keep it organic. But is there anything else on the mixture of experts thing, Anthony? You want to get out there, or um, anything else you want to get out there? AI researchers saying like, "Hey, you guys should try this next." Um, hmm. I had two pages: one on Sora, and okay. another one on the Sam Altman Seven Trillion. If you okay, would let's, like. let's, ah. also your hand. Are you left-handed or right-handed? Right-handed. And I, yeah, yeah calligrapher. I, I, I know <laughs> I, your handwriting is goddamn beautiful. My my left hand, my right in English, left hand it looks like Arabic. It's terrible. Joe, are you left or oh. righty? <laughs> yeah, oh, go to go, go to Sora. Okay, yeah. Uh, the I'll just put it up for a second. There. Mm-hmm. Um, so the the thing about Sora is it is interesting for a particular reason. Um, different, it's kind of the opposite of, uh, Sutton was AR research. He still is an AI researcher who wrote the bitter lesson, which oh, was yeah. this idea that if you just get more and more data, it gets better regardless of the architecture. Yeah. Stop trying to craft features. Yeah. It doesn't need to be perfect. 
Um, and that's, that is valuable to remember. Um, but it's also, Sora has an interesting lesson, which is that when you combine a decent architecture, like flexible enough with a really good data set, then you can get inherent priors. Um, and this is something like Jan LeCun is always talking about is like the, the priors in the network. So Sora was trained on Unreal Engine 5, probably, and that has a physics built in. So there's certain aspects of reality that are built into Sora from the data set side. And that gives it the ability to emulate games like Minecraft. Nice. Um, so, and it kind of reminds me of, did you see Google's Genie? How I was able just to look at just random pictures and then it could kind of basically say between these pictures, now I understand the mechanics of the game and then I can actually generate worlds through it. Yeah. Yeah. I only peeked at it. I haven't seen like details, but details are always sparse these days. Yeah. No, 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 no problem. It's not like there's like 10,000 AI research papers coming out a week. Jesus Christ. 